Hello everybody and welcome to Insider's Guide. Today we're discussing one of the most notorious resorts around, Mammoth. Mammoth is known for many different things depending on where you hear it from. In this video we'll be discussing only what you need to know to make the most of your Mammoth vacation. Mammoth is huge so this episode will be split into four parts. For this part we'll cover the southeastern eagle side of the mountain and we'll work through the rest of the mountain in the other parts. So with that, let's begin an Insider's Guide to Ski Resorts, Mammoth. The number one thing to know about Mammoth is that it gets crowded. Being the closest large destination resort to the second largest city in the country, Mammoth is home to lift lines that live up to its name. This, however, does not mean that you will be inevitably waiting in 20 or more minute lift lines on your peak day or weekend trip here. As is the Insider's Guide standard, Today I'll be sharing all of the methods I know to avoid the lift lines, so stick around for that. But before we go to the mountain analysis, let's cover some background information, starting with the options for parking. Mammoth has four bases at which to start your day, Eagle Lodge, Canyon Lodge, The Mill, and Main Lodge. Each of these areas has free parking, but the spots fill up fast, so you'll want to get there at least 15 minutes before the lifts open to get a good spot. If you don't plan on parking at the resort, there is a village, home to the village gondola, which drops you off at Canyon Lodge. The gondola sees marginal lines in the morning, and if you don't plan on getting to the mountain until after 10 o'clock, lines are pretty much non-existent, plus there are parking spots in town that give easy access to the village gondola. If you're late to get on the mountain, park in town and take the gondola. My favorite place to park is at Canyon Lodge because it's by far the closest drive from town and has the easiest way to get to the Lincoln Mountain runs in the morning. If you don't live in Los Angeles, it might be hard to justify driving to Mammoth. Although conventional proximity-based geography would have you presume it to be a shorter drive from the Bay Area or Central Valley, this is not the case. In the winter, almost all roads that run through the Sierra are closed and drivers from the Bay Area or Central Valley will have to drive all the way up to Lake Tahoe and back down the other side of the Eastern Sierra to get to Mammoth. Flying to Mammoth is not much easier because the closest international airport is Reno and from there it's a three hour drive. You could fly into Mammoth Yosemite Regional Airport but flights are ridiculously limited. Now, let's go ahead and get to the mountain analysis. Something you'll notice is that this trail map doesn't have any lines. It's a very poor design in my opinion, but we'll have to deal with it. I'll do my very best to point out every instance where it isn't inherently obvious where a trail goes or comes from. Alright, let's go ahead and pick it up at Eagle Lodge. Eagle Lodge is home to one six-pack, the Eagle Express, Chair 15, which gives access to some of the most hospitable greens on the mountain. The southeast aspect of this area makes it perennially sunny and warm, unlike many other areas of the mountain. Beginners will want to lap Holiday to Pumpkin, Sleepy Hollow, and the lower half of Back for More. This part of Sleepy Hollow that runs parallel with Pumpkin is much preferable to Pumpkin, as while they are practically the same run with identical widths, steepnesses, and side hits on the uphill side, Sleepy Hollow is typically much less crowded than Pumpkin. As you come down back for more, keep up some speed, as the area around the bottom of chair 25 is a touch uphill. The nice thing about back for more is that you'll have plenty of room to make your turns and you'll have the peace of mind not worrying about collisions with other skiers. While on the topic of greens, it is crucial to know that Milk Run, the inviting looking green to the lookers right of Eagle, leads only to two blue blacks and one blue and does not connect back to any other greens. Stay away from the trap that is Milk Run if you are a true beginner. It's a terrible design, but just be aware. Both Redwing and Redtail have moguls, and Holy Gully is fairly steep. Like almost every groomed blue at Mammoth, Holy Gully gets extremely crowded. Chickadee is a mellow groomed blue that turns into the short, steep black Blue Jay. If you are an intermediate, stay to your left to avoid Blue Jay. Swell is steeper than Chickadee and is usually groomed, but it can occasionally develop moguls. All of these runs will take you to the canyon base. Around midday on weekends, Chair 8 gets lines of the same length as Canyon Express and it takes you to a totally different area than the Canyon Express, so it's not really an alternative to 16, although it would appear to be so on the map. Jumping back over to Chair 15, if you get bored of lapping Sleepy Hollow and Pumpkin and are ready to progress, the Blue's Water Tank and Manzanita are the easiest on the mountain and could easily pass as greens. This adventure zone, Goldie's Flight, also known as Voodoo Shoot, is a tree trail that weaves through moderately spaced Jeffrey and Lodgepole Pine. It has a very mellow pitch, thus making it a fun way for beginners and advanced skiers alike to circumvent the heavy skier traffic on the lower half of Lupin. Eagle draws moderate lines, but by no means is it the worst offender on the mountain. Nonetheless, it usually isn't the best choice for lapping when the mountain gets busy. It gives access to Chair 25 and Cloud 9, both of which generally see negligible lines, as well as Canyon Lodge and Chair 22. 
For intermediate skiers, the Cloud9 Express 6-pack, Chair 9, offers some of the best blue groomers on this side of the mountain. Gold Hill is one such of these really nice groomers, as is Quicksilver, although the former is less often groomed. Additionally, if you duck off to the skier's right of Quicksilver, you'll have access to some lower level glades that I find quite nice. This short run slot is a very enjoyable natural halfpipe that you'll access by sticking to the skier's left of Gold Hill. But beware, it gets icy and crowded, so hit it in the morning. Dragon Alley is an outlier for Mammoth, which doesn't generally have great glade runs. Dragon Alley actually encompasses quite a wide area, so you can lap it over and over and find new places each time. It also holds great powder because it doesn't get ridden very often. One of the great things about this side of the mountain is that there is somewhat of a natural segregation that prevents experts from mixing with beginners too much. Now, if you are an advanced skier, the eagle side is not the best place to be, but there are still some challenges if you know where to look. For the biggest moguls on the entire mountain, take a left off Cloud 9 and hit Ricochet. Ricochet is one of Mammoth's only real endurance runs as it just never seems to end. From Cloud 9, you can also access this double black, Dragon's Tail, but it's a treacherous endeavor and requires a 15 to 20 minute traverse that runs directly across the precipitously pitched Wazoo. If you do manage to get to the end of the ridge by Wazoo, you'll find that the ridge flattens out and you'll have to take off your skis or snowboard. You'll be well below the tree line now. As you walk along the ridge, look down to find where the best snow is. This area almost always has nice soft snow because it's so hard to get to. You can walk for what seems like forever through the woods along this ridge until you see a boundary sign and a patrol sled, at which point you'll have to drop in. Dragon's Tail is extremely steep and thoroughly covered with narrowly spaced trees, but there's no better place to find good snow if there hasn't been any recent accumulation. Cloud9 isn't the best way to access Dragon's Tail though, and in the final part of this episode I'll talk about an alternative route and the rest of the Dragon's Back area. This Chair 25 generally isn't very useful, with one very specific exception. 25 is great when the crowds get unbearable elsewhere and you want to ski the groomed blues around Lincoln Mountain, such as Haven't the Foggiest and Back for More, which both are moderately pitched fairly wide and long groomers that actually become one run in the middle. These are excellent for intermediate skiers. Chair 25 rarely sees lines at all because it takes a minimum of 10 minutes to ride and doesn't access any terrain that you can't access from another lift. Sunshine Glades is the run I recommend least on the entire mountain. It is icy all day, every day. It can even be icy the day after a large powder dump. Additionally, Sunshine Glades is long and it can be hard to bail to easier terrain. Repeat 22 is a little cut across that, as its name suggests, was only useful for getting back to 22. You might notice Tamarack Lodge here, which actually isn't a downhill skiing lodge. It's a historic hotel and cross-country skiing lodge. There are shuttle services at Tamarack Lodge that run back and forth to the village if you end up here somehow. Directly off of Eagle is Eagle Playground. This municipal terrain park is only good if you've never seen a terrain park before and are wondering what the bright pink colored boxes are for. Actually, if you've never seen a terrain park and want to try one, Eagle Playground might not work out for you. It seems like it's not actually built half the time, and when it is, you might still wonder if it is built because it generally consists of three features, a barely visible pile of snow they call a jump, and two wide boxes. However, if it is set up, Eagle Playground is actually a good place to learn how to ski park because of how low consequence the features are. You'll want to upgrade pretty quickly though. Mammoth has some great terrain parks in other areas, which we'll discuss in later parts. Eagle Lodge has some of the only true ski-in, ski-out accommodations at Mammoth. Bridges and Eagle Run condominiums directly access Bridges and Lupin respectively, and you can ski directly in and out of both. Because they are in such high demand, they are, quite obviously, very expensive. However, if you can afford it, staying in these condos is highly, highly worth it to avoid the absolute nightmare that is parking. Well, that's about it for the Eagle Lodge side of the resort. Go check out parts B, C, and D now, all about the rest of the mountain. As always, please leave any questions down below. Thank you all so much for watching. All my love, I'm out.